So back in January, Stem Cell Technologies put out a call asking for scientists to come to Vancouver to peer review stem cell as scientists helping scientists. This was to review whether stem cell is actually succeeding at being scientists helping scientists. They received over 300 applications and through a fairly intensive review process, they decided on three scientist reviewers. My name is Dr. Fiona Frame and I have come from the University of York, UK to peer review stem cell technologies. My name is Dr. Amy Stone, I'm from the University of Washington and I'm here to review stem cell. My name is Dr. Daniel Craig Ayer and I come from the Atlantic Cancer Research Institute in Moncton, New Brunswick to peer review stem cell technologies in Vancouver. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here and become pretty. I want to peer review stem cell because I think there should be a more uh, open relationship between academia and industry. I'm a cancer research scientist, so ultimately the goal is to help patients, so there shouldn't be any barriers to that. So, welcome to stem cell. Throughout this peer review process, I expect stem cell to show me everything, warts and all. The good, the bad, the ugly. I want to know everything that's going on and I expect to be able to come in, examine stem cell and ask those questions about how are these reagents consistent, what is the quality, and how is that quality measured over time. So we're at Station Street right now, this is our R&D headquarters. We're going to do a quick tour. And I think there's always a danger in science of becoming a little bit insular. We spend a lot of time thinking about what's going on in our labs. From the company perspective, I think it's a great idea for stem cell to bring in some outside voices and see what they think about what's going on. Uh, we have a uh, bevy of our researchers here. Coming in and meeting the scientists from the R&D team was really exciting for me, getting to see yeah. their lab and see how similar it is to my lab. How do you decide when a product is ready for development and what are your standards for that? I really enjoyed listening to them talk about collaboration to try and develop new products. And I think also we have beta testers all the time, right? So we're constantly getting feedback. So it's not like we have this launch and it's like this moment that we're nervous about. We've already got it tested. There's a lot of beta testers already testing it and they want it launched earlier than we want to produce it because they really like the product already. I'd want to see the validation, particularly that information from the beta testers. The more information I have and the more people that have tried it and it's worked consistently, the more confident I feel in that reagent. Speaking with John and seeing the leading edge of where science is for me. I'm a cancer researcher now and this is where my field is going. I already see that stem cell is ready to support the kind of work that we're going to want to do. That's very exciting and very reassuring. So our next stop in our visit was the process development team. So Process development at Stem Cell is a group of about 45 scientists and engineers from a wide variety of backgrounds. It's people who understand the product, how to use the product. So I loved being able to go and see what it looks like when research has to meet a practical demand. Do you build in the same analytics that the manufacturing teams will use? Typically, yes. We have an idea, we try it out in the lab. This is seeing how that idea goes out into the world. When something goes to manufacturing, again, they're able to generate it time and time again. Just the amount of work involved is quite mind-boggling. Yeah. <laughs> In manufacturing, if there's a mistake, it's kind of a much more expensive problem. So when we were in the packaging and labeling facility, I saw one bottle of media that seemed to be filled more than the others. It was like the elephant in the room where they're going, that, one, that one's different. That one's wrong. And I kept wondering, is anybody else gonna say anything about it? And so as we were leaving, quick question. This bottle looks like it's more full than that one. Amy grabbing the bottle beat us all to the punch. First, I saw this look of surprise and shock on her face, and then... Oh, that bottle's just higher. When the product is filled inside of a clean room, we actually weight each oh, bottle. Oh, okay. Each bottle is weighed. So it's not measured necessarily by volume so much as validated by, by weight. weight. Okay. So the problem was obviously not really there, but I guess it showed attention to detail and the fact that the quality cannot be compromised. So in terms of the support services that are provided by stem cell, it really is a case of trying to troubleshoot together to solve the problem, but it's a two-way street. The scientist does have to give enough information so that the technical specialist is able to help them. The comment that we most often get is the level of support that we provide, other companies don't provide that. And we've heard Absolutely. it enough that we believe it. I've been on the other right. end of that. You don't get that. 
talking to other customer support lines, most of the time what you get is, oh, well, sorry about that. Here's a Here's new, a new one. <laughs> Try that. Well, that yeah. one's crap too. Yeah. <laughs> the quality control department was an area where I really had not appreciated the scope. There are SOPs for everything in the building, including validation of the machines. Do you have an example of that that we could look at? So the number of scientists, technicians, assays that are used and how the data is recorded and analyzed in order to get trends of the product quality. Any kind of blip can be identified and investigated before it becomes a problem. So I really appreciate to be able to hear about the standards and the quality control as well as the development of the protocols because if we can standardize reagents and protocols across different fields, that's really going to address the reproducibility issues that we see from lab to lab. Thinking about science communication, we spoke with Nicole about that. Many companies really just throw one random intern on their social media or their science communication and kind of hope it turns out okay. So the fact that stem cell is really focusing on science communication and making sure that the information that they provide is accurate and timely is really powerful for connecting with scientists. What we're trying to do at Stem Cell is, is figure out how to make it more accessible on a broader scale, which is why we have the newsletters and the podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Stem Cell Podcast. The podcast was a new experience. I've never done that before. I felt like it's, it's a really good platform to get more sort of informal discussions. It's kind of fun being challenged on camera to defend your opinions. Craig, I got a final question. It's not going to be easy, bro. I apologize. <laughs> Hit me. I'm ready. <laughs> but I when I met Alan, what really stood out to me was he cares about putting out products to support scientists. And when I asked him what drives you to do this, the answer really was, I want to make a scientist's life easier. I do want to make sure we don't lose our focus. The idea is to make really good products that support cancer and other researchers do their jobs better. It's all about the quality of our products and their usefulness. Right? You still seem to think of yourselves as small, but truthfully at this point you're one of the heavy hitters. Do you see a role for stem cell to continue to develop and be a leader in framing education and conversations about science? Setting an example is more important because we're employing all these smart young kids that love science and can't get jobs anywhere. The role that stem cell has as an employer can be underestimated and taken for granted. The postdoctoral community feels rather like they're getting pushed out of academia. There doesn't seem to be a future just as being a scientist. So the philosophy behind stem cell gives me some hope that postdocs can be seen as valuable people and um, potentially a valued employee. Sitting down and talking science with everyone that had been organizing this event, that really stands out to me because it, it says to me that this group of people cares about science so much that we're going to have a nerdy conversation about it over lunch when we could be talking about anything. One of the things that I kept getting told on and off camera was about how important work-life balance was for people at Stem Cell. Having somebody tell me that they're interested in finding out what they can do to support me as a person, support me as a customer, support me as a colleague, that resonates with me. The key behind any successful company is really the people. And the thing that has come across to me very strongly with everybody I've met is a commitment. My review on stem cell, my concluding remarks, it's uh, except with minor revisions. I've seen that scientists helping scientists is a legitimate statement about the company culture. I feel stem cell can add to that. Stem cell needs to be more proactive. So push the conversation. Getting people involved in how the questions are formed is where we can build the trust back. What we see today may not be what's here in three years. And bringing someone back with independent eyes to come in and ask those questions, I think is really important. It's an ongoing discussion. And it's important for stem cell to continue this discussion even after the three of us for this first round of peer review have left.